to our next episode of uh, Feed My Sheep, Earthquake Reports, and more. It is the 13th of August, and the big earthquake uh, news down in the uh, South Sandwich Islands is that the agencies have upgraded that earthquake to an 8.1, um, recognizing that it's much too large to be uh, even considering that it would be a 7.5. Um, and I have some new information in as well um, regarding that, that series of events. So uh, before we begin, we'll stop for a quick prayer because all of our programs are dedicated to our Heavenly Father service. <coughs> Heavenly Father, thank you that we can come before you again and share the information that you lead us to. Jesus, we pray for your shepherding, for your instruction, for your direction. And Holy Spirit, we pray that you would bring the gifts that we need to understand and to discern truth. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's just have a quick look for those that haven't. Whoa, I've got the whole screen. There we go. So this is the location of the earthquakes, and this has filled in with a lot more earthquakes. Now, I didn't put up another video, but, uh, or I mean uh, another shot, but uh, there's a lot more earthquakes through this area. They've continued um, overnight, and uh, it's, it's just uh, a lot of activity. That essentially, what we have is uh, about 600 miles of plate all shifted. This whole curve through here is all shifting. So that's that's a big move. This is how it... Um, oh, I should blow that up just so we can have a little better look. Sorry, folks. As I said, this, uh, this whole plate is shifting here. This is a very deep trench along here, and these are volcanic islands that parallel the edge of the trench and the air, edge of the ridge. South Sandwich Trench, South Sandwich Islands, um, East Scotia Ridge. This is also known as the uh, um, South Sandwich Ridge as well in this area. Another look at the size of the earthquake. This is from 1,500 miles away and gives you an idea of the size when we're this far away and it looks this big. And that was early stages. That got uh, that filled in quite a bit more. This is how Alaska looked. And looking from uh, Alaska, this had allowed some overwriting to occur. So we were continuing to get earthquake after earthquake, um, and showing from Alaska was right off the uh, top of the page. So very very large activities. We were getting follow up eights, low eights, um, following the initial earthquake, which was larger. I had it pegged initially as an 8.9, but we didn't have the body wave data in, so that's going to change again. This, uh, this site gave us a little bit of ability to see the shape of the earthquake, and that's why these are posted there. And, uh, and also to show the... Um, this is Corvallis, and Corvallis allowed us to see some of the uh, separation in the earthquake some of the different waveforms. Now, this is the New Madrid um, activity that was going on um, just before and just after the earthquakes that we've had. We had the uh, 8.7 um, in uh, the Philippines as well. So this is uh, this was before the Philippines, I believe. I'll just pull that up and that no, that's on the 12th, so that's just before the um, the South Sandwich earthquake. So a big plate shift there, carried on into the next 12-hour um, seismogram, still on the 12th. So this is uh, 13. This is 1,200 here, 1,300 here. Mark Tree, Arizona. Just busier than normal. You can see some uh, plate shift activity mixed into this, but it's a little busier than normal, but this is a very active site. 
Norcross Farms also had activity. This is on the 11th. So Norcross Farms and did I, I believe that's Arkansas. Yeah, it's in between uh, two Ar other Arkansas sites. All the Arkansas sites are in order. Truman, um, Arkansas is also a very, very busy site. Just showing it because it continues to be that active. We've got a lot of pulsed magma flow through this site. It's not reacting to the earthquake as the uh, other sites were. New Harmony, Harmony, Indiana, however, reacted huge to this activity. This is on the 12th, so there's a lot of pressure showing before the earthquake, and New Harmony is seems to be reacting to uh, stress on plates of the earth. Um, the stress that led to this uh, South Sandwich Island uh, was applying stress elsewhere at the same time. Because that continued, I'll let you look at it from there. You can see it continues from the top one to the bottom one, and then this one gets busier. And look at how busy this was with plate shift. This is plate shift activity. It's just incredible. Or fault shift, sorry. Fault shift. And this is ARP Tennessee on the 11th, leading into fault shift activity through here. And it carries on. You can see it uh, carries on into the second seismogram. So um, this is after the um, earthquake in the Philippines and before um, before the South Sandwich earthquake. It's very significant activity. Again, fault shift. It gives you these big spikes with an underlying vibration. Big spikes, underlying vibration. Gobbler, Tennessee was busy on the 12th. Um, this site doesn't show a plate shift in the same way. It has more earthquakes as a result. So it doesn't shift as easily. And that's due to the strata. Now there may be some magma infill through this area. We have long signals as well. Underlying here in red and into the blue. McCarty, Missouri. On the 11th, this is the first half of the day. This finishes at 12 noon. Um, seeing fault shift through McCarty, pretty significant. That's a lot of activity. Moor Mooring, Tennessee, uh, Missouri. Sorry, Mooring, Missouri. Also very busy on the 10th. So not all of these sites are moving at the same time. Some of them are basically loading up and releasing earlier. Others are releasing later. This is um, St. John's Bayou. And this, and this carried on like this with bursts of activity through the 12th as well. Portageville. Um, Portageville is probably how it's pronounced there. Um, portage would be French. But anyway. Um, we see that this green line, you're seeing the blue, which changes to the green, heavy vibration, and then it's off. It's, it just disappears. What happens? Well, we see the return of the stylus to the hour line here. We see the return of the stylus to the hour line here. Um, this is where it took off in VLF waves that were too large of an activity for this uh, seismogram to handle. Um, so it basically kicked the stylus off. All right, so it kicked it uh, into a non-functioning mode, but uh, I've uh, I've seen duplicates of this matching VLF waves uh, that we have when we have duplicate sites, and this is just what it looks like for a lot of the seismograms when we get VLF waves through a site. So Portageville, uh, Missouri, was getting uh, getting some VLF waves on the 11th, second half. This is Cape Girardeau. Um, Missouri, again on the uh, New Madrid Fault, um, and a big shift of activity. This is on the 11th, and it's the uh, first seismogram of the day. 
12 hour seismogram. Cape Girardeau second half and this is the uh, Philippine earthquake here. Cape Girardeau on the 12th. This is the um, the earthquake in the South Sandwich Islands coming through to this seismogram. And here's plate shift or fault shift activity rather showing uh, after the earthquake. So we had a reaction um, in the New Madrid not to the force of, of the earthquake that occurred in the South Sandwich Islands but there was also force being applied to North America at the same time. We're seeing a reaction to that force in North America. This is Corbin, Virginia on the 12th. Again, uh, lighter activity, but still significant. Fault shift activity. Hopedale, Indiana also had some VLF wave, waves, and we're seeing them here. Now, hopefully this video is turning out all right, because I'm seeing some flashes of issues on the uh, camera, but we'll see how it goes. So this is um, this line here should be a green line where there's a gap. It's been bumped up by the activity level and given us a few minutes of VLF waves. So much too great of an activity for the seismogram to handle. Kicked it offline. Pockley, Texas. I just wanted to show you this um, because from Pockley, Texas, it's showing the body wave. This is the earthquake. Um, just a different look at it, right? Um, this is the South Sandwich Islands earthquake, and this is going on um, for a significant period of time that we don't see any uh, return of the timelines for hours. Um, that means we're continuing to have large activity through there. And this is the, what the body wave looks like on this seismogram type. So we continue to have these waves. It continues on to the next seismogram. We see an easy um, one, two, there was nine hours on the other page, so we got one, two, three, four, five. We, we have five hours of body wave activity at this point. Um, this is very likely the signal of the earthquakes in the South Sandwich Islands coming around again because it was that strong that it went around the Earth and uh, set off another set of uh, signals. Uh, the time frame matches that that's what this is. Anyway, yeah, they can, uh, they can go around the world, come back again, and set off another whole series. Of course, they're much smaller in size, but you can tell the duration is much the same from here to here as compared to this previous area of the seismogram from here to here couple of hours of the, the heaviest activity. So we're seeing um, on this um, 9 and 6, um, 15 hours, 15 hours of body wave, just on this one. We're going to look at that a little closer. Oxford, Mississippi. Now, you, it doesn't look like this a lot. I didn't show it as the VLF waves. I've done this with the um, heliplots and shown um, Oxford, Tennessee, but this is, or Oxford, Mississippi, rather. But this is um, showing little changes in the line. This is all little pick up, but it's uh, actually VLF waves. This system is just not designed to pick them up well. So Oxford, Mississippi is having VLF waves, and so is Tazewell, Tennessee. This is uh, on the 11th. And this is how uh, the waves are being interpreted by that seismogram. These are VLF waves. Fault shift occurring in Tazewell. Fault shift occurring in Mississippi. Again, we're seeing a different version of it here, but this is more VLF wave activity, and I verified this on the heliplots. So that's what's going on. The Ozark Folk Center on the 11th. That's Arkansas, of course. Over to South Carolina, Kings Mountain, um, Blacksburg, South Carolina. This is uh, 
fault shift activity that's straddling either side of the Philippine earthquake. It also straddles either side of, um, of the South Sandwich earthquake, but it's busy in the middle as well. Quite busy. Very active site, but it's much more active around the time period of this earthquake. And in this case up here along the top line, you can clearly see the spikes of fault shift. All right. Sumter, South Carolina has been very busy recently. And uh, here we're seeing the, uh, the large earthquake in the South Sandwich Islands. That's what we're seeing through here. Um, we're seeing major wave deflection th through this. It's a very active site. There's a lot of vibrations. We're having fault shift occur in Sumter, very significant fault shift activity. And it's carried on to the 13th. There it is there, another uh, burst of activity uh, uh, today. Bolivia, South Carolina, just because the act, this is normally a pretty quiet site, much like what we see down here, but right around the time of the uh, activity in the South Sandwich Islands, it got very busy. Fault shift again. Montrose, Georgia. This is on the 10th. So I'll just have a quick look at that. So there's um, pressure showing in um, Montrose, Georgia. Montrose on the 11th. This is a, a much more reactive site. It, um, it's displaying that a lot of pressure is being put on that area. Uh, and this is uh, around the time of the Philippines earthquake. Just about losing control of this site here. Hopefully it's not freezing. This is the South Sandwich Islands earthquake. This is today, first half. And this is the second half today. So a very, very busy site in Montrose. Now we're going to look at Pioneer, Louisiana. Fault shift activity in Pioneer. That's on the 11th. Second half of the day in Pioneer, we're seeing the Philippine earthquake here and more fault shift activity. This is a lot of activity, a big uptick in Pioneer. Pioneer on the 12th and straddling the earthquake. So we see it, uh, it's busy here, and it's busy across the bottom. So now we're going to look at the continued heavy activity um, of the body wave of the earthquake that we had in the South Sandwich Islands. And this started at 1900. At this point, there's 24 hours to this line. And we still have more activity showing. That's from Greenland. This is a look from Fairbanks, Alaska. There's the 1900 line here. We can see the body wave is continuing. So we're, uh, we're looking at about 26 hours of body wave for this earthquake. And ADAC, Alaska Shows much the same thing. There's 1,900 hours. I'd cut it off at about 2,100, call it 20, 26 hours of total duration um, from the onset. And in Alaska, it showed up at about 1,900. So that's a very, very large earthquake. It's no wonder the agencies kicked this up to an 8.1. However, this was no 8.1. This blacked out seismograms, or nearly blacked out seismograms um, in Alaska, throughout the, the process of the earthquake for a few hours. Um, and uh, the body wave continued from this for 
uh, 26 hours. The 9.5 that we had um, that I assessed, um, that carried on with uh, body waves for 30 hours. This is 26 hours. This isn't that much smaller. This is uh, at least a 9.2, and um, it could be a little higher. This was a very complex series event earthquake, um, and with having so many sets of S waves, and uh, although it's the agencies are saying it was shallow, I showed earlier um, that there was very deep, deep activity multiple times through this earthquake, and with the largest waveforms. Um, so this was indeed a very deep earthquake, and deep earthquakes hide um, the size of the force quite well. Um, so if this had been a more shallow earthquake, it would have looked uh, much larger than what we saw. Um, we counted in ex well, we continue saw it all across the seismogram that we continued to have very large earthquakes showing uh, they were right off the chart all the way up in Alaska, and that means we were having uh, high high sevens and low eights as aftershocks. So very very much bigger earthquake than what the agencies are saying. They're underneath by over a magnitude with this earthquake, and that's not uncommon. All right, so I hope you uh, have enjoyed this or appreciate this uh, update, and if you like what we're doing, give us a thumbs up and uh, share us with your friends, and we'll see you next time. Um, and let us not have fear going forward. Um, we know this is all building up, um, and if we've uh, listened to the modern-day prophets, we know um, what is coming and checked, done our due diligence and checked to see who is reliable, because God said there's going to be, and Jesus said, and pro or the apostles all said there would be um, very many false prophets in these days. So when they're making mistakes, they're false. Um, you can't be stating what the Word of God is and be making mistakes. Um, and be a true prophet of God. So if there, if you're finding that people are that you're following are showing a lot of errors in what they say is going to happen and it's not coming true, um, you have to then question: Should we be listening to that person? And so there are some uh, very solid prophets out there today. Dana Coverstone's one, Amanda Grace is another. Check out their prophecies. Um, our group here at uh, Feed Our Sheep, Earthquakes and More, we've checked them out. We've done our due diligence with them, back-checking their prophecies, and they haven't been wrong. So that's a, that's a rarity these days. So we believe there's a large earthquake coming, and this is precursor activity to the large earthquakes. This makes now six 9.0 and greater earthquakes in eight months. This is amazing. Because, like I say, this is, uh, and with the eights that came with this um, as aftershocks, we've had something in the range of um, 15 years worth of large earthquakes in the past eight months. That tells you, that's a warning, something bigger is coming. And that's what's prophesied for. So be prepared, trust in God, shelter under his wings, and keep your eyes on Jesus. Draw close. And we'll see you next time on Feed My Sheep, Earthquake Reports, and more. Bye for now.